Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. My name is Akshi. I am a first year, well, was a first year, going into my next year now at Imperial College London studying medicine. Today's video is a very big video and it's how to survive your first year of med school. Now, that's a big question and a lot of you guys might be thinking, you know what, it can't be too difficult. It's pretty much the same as A-levels and it is not. Uh, it is really not the same as A-levels and med school already takes biology and chemistry and just raises it to a whole new level. And being able to survive that transition period, you've got to be able to do a few things. And we're going to go through those things in this video. Again, we'll have timestamps just here, so you can go and click to any part of the video that you want to find more relevant or that you want to, you know, look at in more detail. Uh, if not, feel free to join the rest of us as we go through this video in chronological order. But yeah, so the first part of the video, we're going to be talking about how exactly to organize yourself. The second part of the video is going to be how exactly to take notes at med school. And the third part of the video is going to be how to revise for exams. Now, these are going to be very brief and I'll probably make videos more in detail, especially about the last part. This is going to be a very sort of whistle stop tour, if you like. So uh, I understand that this might leave some of you a little bit confused at some point, but feel free to drop any questions in the comments below. Uh, also, feel free to ask anyone else in the comments. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people willing to help out. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys uh, subscribe. Uh, we are very close to 400 subscribers and it would be super cool if you guys could hit the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, that's everything. Uh, let's get straight into it. Cool, so organization is obviously such a key thing at med school. And I would say when you're organizing yourself, it's really important, and this is the biggest thing, just to stay organized from day one. And you might be thinking, you know what, they'll give us like a grace period where we can sort of mess around a little bit, not care too much. And that's true. Um, most universities like Imperial give you a little bit of a grace period to transition in, get used to things. They don't give you too much work within those two weeks. But it is just really helpful to just stay organized from day one. You don't need to keep a log of, you know, how much food you're eating, how many breaths you're taking, how many steps you're taking. I'm not asking you to do that, okay? So if you've got, for example, five lectures in your first week, just keep a note or have like a timetable set up where you're ticking off lectures that you've made notes on, ticking off lectures that you revised on, and, you know, you're sort of making sure that you've got an up-to-date spreadsheet or something of lectures that you've taken notes from and you've revised. Uh, because it just makes life a lot easier when you get into sort of the meaty parts of year one, where you're going to have a lot more lectures, a lot more tutorials, a lot more learning, and it can get a little bit sort of overwhelming if you've not kept up to date from day one. Uh, so definitely keep a brief, a very short spreadsheet um, as you go along. Also keep up to date with sort of lectures and tutorials. Go to every single one of them. Uh, please, this is something that I cannot stress enough. Attend every lecture and tutorial. It might seem really enticing to skip a few lectures here and there. However, it is really important that you just keep up to date with that because the minute you start missing one, you'll miss another and it sort of snowballs into a big thing where you just haven't learned a half of your course. And you know, people will say that, oh, I'll get back to that in time and we'll contribute a recording of that. You never do. You will never watch the recording. You'll never get back to it. Believe me, this never happens. Uh, this is some sort of fake imaginary day where you have, you know, ages to revisit lectures because you don't have that time. So please do attend all lectures, all tutorials from day one. Uh, it can be really tiresome if you don't like a particular lecture or a particular topic, but it is worth it because it helps you stay organized. And um, so, yeah, I would definitely say to do that. So the next part of the video is how to take notes in med school. And this is a really, I don't like to say controversial, but a very sort of touchy subject because a lot of people have their own techniques and that's fair enough. Um, I don't want to tell anyone how to take notes, but I would like to give you a little bit of advice. And that advice is to not take notes as much as possible. Now that might be a little bit counterintuitive because you might be thinking, hang on, you just told me how to take notes and now you're telling me not to take notes. But what I don't want people to start doing is take passive notes because at med school, you don't have time. Believe me, you've not got time to you know, sit around taking passive notes on Microsoft Word and making colourful little diaries of every lecture you've done because there are notes available from somebody, somewhere, for every single lecture that you do. And what you don't want to be doing is being that one guy who just takes notes which you're not going to go back over, which won't help you during revision. And what you should be doing is either taking notes just to keep yourself engaged in the tutorial or in the lecture, and maybe just tossing those notes away at the end of the lecture because you're not going to revisit them. Um, something maybe just to keep you sort of engaged or sort of awake during the lecture or tutorial, or making sort of flashcards during your tutorial or lectures, making sort of uh, revision Q and A's, um, something that involves active revision. If any sort of note-taking method requires you to make questions or requires you to recall information, that's going to be effective uh, 
as opposed to sort of just writing down lines and words and sort of incomprehensible basic copies of what your lecturer is saying because that doesn't help um, if you can imagine what I'm saying. So get an app like Brainscape or Quizlet and make some flashcards or just make some notes just to keep you awake during the lecture. Come home, make some question and answers. That's all you really need to do at med school. You shouldn't be wasting time, you know, making colorful notes on Word, you know, drawing stuff on OneNote. You know, it, it, it can be helpful to some, but realistically, you're not going to go back over it when you're revising for exams. So I would definitely say to keep flashcards and Q&As, but anything else that isn't active really isn't worth the time at med school. And you just find that you never have the time to go back over them or even to keep doing that. So please do stop doing that and avoid doing that at all. Um, I'm telling you guys this saying from my own mistakes. I did this at one point and I realized very quickly that it's a waste of time. So yeah, I kind of ditched it very early on. But you know, for those of you who really feel attached to it, um, please stop feeling attached to it. I can't really tell you guys this in any more detail, but please do not do this at med school. You don't have time and it is probably the one of the most time wasting things that people can do. So yeah, uh, hopefully that makes sense. And the final thing we're going to talk about is how to revise. Now, this is a bigger video, definitely, but I'll give you a few sort of tips and it probably isn't applicable to you guys right now, but maybe you can implement some of these techniques in sort of smaller topic tests or mock tests that you have throughout the year, because you will have sort of very small, very sort of irrelevant tests that just help you learn. And, you know, they don't count for anything, but, you know, they're sort of like your school vocabulary tests. They don't really matter, um, but, you know, they're just helpful for you to gauge your understanding. So maybe you can implement these things and sort of figure out what works for you and what doesn't. So when you're revising for medical school exams, the main thing you have to be doing is doing active recall, whether that's flashcards, Q and A's, any sort of technique that requires active recall, that's the best thing. What you don't want to be doing is going over notes that you've already written and sort of rewriting them or rewriting a textbook or rewriting a tutorial in your own words. You know, that might sound like it helps because it's in your own words and it's shorter, but realistically it doesn't help you actually remember or retaining the information, which is the most key thing you need to do when you're revising. So make sure you're always doing active recall, whether that's Q&As or flashcards or anything else that requires you to engage yourself. Also, make sure if you're doing anatomy to use as many cadaveric images as possible. So what a cadaveric image is, is basically any sort of image of a dissection or prosection. Um, I'm not going to put that on the screen because UT will probably, you know, lock this video down very quickly. But if you just type in cadaver images or anatomy into Google or into sort of uh, lib texts, whatever comes up is pretty much what I'm talking about. So labeled images. Um, making sure you're using as many of those as possible because that's what you're going to get in the exams and it also helps you visualize things a lot better um, as opposed to reading textbooks. So for anatomy, as much visual sort of data you can get is best. And I guess doing everything sort of with the appropriate timings because while you may be able to recall information having like five minutes, if the exam only gives you 25 seconds, there's no point of doing it in five minutes. So try and stick to the time that the exam gives you. If you don't know the timings of your exam, try and ask maybe your teachers or your lecturers or whoever is in charge of examinations at your university. And make sure you abide by that because if you don't do that, that's gonna cause you problems later on. So I guess that's the main thing I would say. And those are three things that hopefully sort of make it a little bit easier to navigate revision. Um, because I know a lot of people try and just stick with rewriting stuff, you know, just reading notes, watching videos, and while they can be helpful in a sort of primal sense, realistically, they don't help you retain information. And with anatomy as well, it's a very new thing, so hopefully, you know, that idea of getting visual data, getting labels, and sort of again, just doing that recall where you cover, recall, check, cover, recall, check system of sort of a re active recall, that is the best way of doing anatomy and as well as that making sure time uh, management is key obviously during a revision but yeah in terms of revision there's nothing too much that i can say in a 10 minute video which is dedicated to a lot more than this but if you guys want me to or well, i probably will anyway make a video dedicated to revising for exams um there'll be a lot more detail than that but i say for now that is all you really need to know um so yeah hopefully this video while it may sound like year one is a nightmare it's not it's very fun and obviously it's great but there are just a few things i really would urge you guys to sort of take and input into your own learning and your own organization because it can really help so yeah 
Um, do have fun there in year one. Do enjoy it. It is a laugh. Um, genuinely enjoy things because very quickly things will get a lot trickier. So please do enjoy it. Um, if you've got any other questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, again, my social media is right here. So you can sort of contact that anytime you feel free, anytime you need to. And um, yeah, if you are going to Imperial College this year, um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, make yourself known. And uh, I'll be sure to... Um, say hello hopefully you enjoyed the video though and um, it makes sense uh, please do like it and also feel free to hit the red button and follow the channel um, because we're very close to 400 subscribers and it would be really helpful so yeah um, I think that's everything I'm sort of waffling on a bit now I'll let you get back to your day um, we'll see you in the next video